Frage Nummer drei. Welche Konflikte kann es zwischen Freunden geben? Und wie kann man sie lösen? Achte auf. The future perfect. Comparing adjectives. And conditionals for hypothetical situations with würde and an infinitive. Hier sind einige Ideen. Es kann Konflikte kleinerer Art und größerer Art zwischen Freunden geben. Konflikte kleinerer Art wären zum Beispiel, wenn man sich darüber streiten würde, welche die bessere Fußballmannschaft ist oder die beste Band und so weiter. Man kann diese Konflikte lösen, indem man akzeptiert, dass der Freund einen anderen Geschmack als man selbst hat. Ein Konflikt größerer Art wäre zum Beispiel, wenn er ein Geheimnis weitererzählen würde. Wenn es sich um einen guten Freund handelt, wird er seinen Fehler eingesehen haben, sich Gedanken gemacht haben und sich entschuldigt haben, bevor man ihn darauf ansprechen muss. So we have lots of future perfects here in the uh, in this last paragraph, the second paragraph, um, and this is a very advanced form of grammar for AS. It works pretty logically, however. Um, this is saying something will have happened. So you're talking about a time in the future when somebody will already have done something. So um, er wird das Problem eingesehen haben means he will have understood the problem, he will have thought about it, he will have uh, recognized the problem. Uh, similarly, er wird sich Gedanken gemacht haben, this is a nice idiom, um, sich Gedanken machen um, is a very Germanic phrase, I guess it really means he will have reflected or thought deeply about the problem, and er wird sich entschuldigt haben, he will have said sorry, sich entschuldigen is just really a way to say that someone says sorry. We also had some comparative adjectives, and these are great. Kleinere Art and größere Art. Uh, this is a set phrase you can put after uh, perhaps ein Problem, ein Konflikt, and it means of a smaller kind or of a larger kind, and you don't need to ever change that. Just leave it as kleinere Art and größere Art. For the grammar buffs amongst you, you'll see it's got two ER endings on. Uh, so it goes ER, ER on the end of both words. Uh, the first ER is to make it into a comparative, and the second ER is to uh, is the genitive ending for an adjective standing on its own, and it's uh, in the feminine form because art is a feminine word. It means type, so of a smaller type and of a larger type, literally. We had some uh, straightforward comparative adjectives and one superlative as well: die bessere Mannschaft und die beste Band. Then finally, um, we had a few conditional uh, with würde and the infinitive uh, phrases. These are to talk about things that might perhaps happen. And if we just look very quickly back at the text, um, it in the second uh, paragraph in particular, you can see that the person who's giving the, the talk here is really just making a, a putting out an idea of what would happen if the friend did these things. And it's slightly different than in English because we would pr perhaps say of the first uh, uh, example given, um, if my friend told somebody else a secret. And we would use if and the past tense, whereas because in German this is not, it hasn't happened, it's, we're thinking about whether some, about this as a, an option that might perhaps happen, then you have to be really strict and it's, it's a hypothetical situation, so there you go with the conditional tense and you have to have würde and an infinitive. So uh, let's look back at the two examples. Uh, wenn man sich darüber streiten würde, this is uh, saying if you would argue about something. In English we'd probably say if you argued about something. And also wenn er ein Geheimnis weiter erzählen würde, that's the example we just looked at. And it's all to do with uh, if, y if he or she told somebody else a secret. But again, remember, it's not a past tense in German. It's got to be with würde and the infinitive. So that's, that's why we have würde and weiter erzählen. Uh, so give those a try. Some really great language. And we look forward to seeing your answers.